And also in the last couple of weeks, we had the news that the Italian police are investigating the senior race engineer of Ferrari, Nigel Stepney, amid all kinds of allegations and rumours about sabotage and espionage as well. Tech Kravitz has been trying to make sense of what's going on. During the glory days at Ferrari, Nigel Stepney was known as the Enforcer. He was largely responsible for whipping the Italians into a slick championship winning team. He recently announced he wanted to leave and now finds himself charged with sabotage. A few days before the Monaco Grand Prix, we found something uh, not proper in our factory. We asked the police uh, to make an investigation and uh, we had from the police enough evidence to bring an action to the court of Modena against uh, Nigel. And also there is an, an internal disciplinary procedure uh, against him in uh, still ongoing. The charges centre around an alleged tampering of a fuel rig ahead of the Monaco Grand Prix. Stories in the press of suspicious white powder around the rig and in the fuel tank are understood to be false and do not form part of the charge. In any case, such interference would be difficult to achieve. The FIA, every session, are taking fuel samples from, from lots of cars. Um, so they'd immediately know if there was a, a problem and, and different batches of fuel. You'd have to contaminate a huge amount. For, uh, so I can't see the sabotage thing being uh, anything that's likely to have happened. For me, that's too incredible. Stepney is currently on unapproved leave in Asia. He remains a Ferrari employee and significantly denies all the accusations against him. He was always uh, doing a good job. It was always important for the team. So for me, it's a big surprise to see these things. I don't really want to wanna get involved too much because I don't know exactly what's been going on. But what I heard has happened. I think so. He's, he's, he's much happier that he's not in the, involved anymore. He's a long time guy in Formula One, worked and been part of their, their very successful team. So again, I'm sure I'd, I'd be surprised if anything had happened. Nigel Stepney has held talks with other F1 teams about a job while Ferrari is continuing with its case. It's a bizarre end to the Ferrari dream team. At the moment it's a legal case, uh, ongoing, and uh, it does not allow me to, to comment on that, so I'm going to be very quiet about that. But you can confirm that this is a real case and not some attempt to, to, to blacken Nigel's name? I mean, so you just have to listen what I mentioned before. It's a legal case going on and I'm not going to comment any further. Well, all the excitement and the intensity of that qualifying competition yesterday went some way to dispel the atmosphere of intrigue and suspicion that's been around the paddock the last few weeks, all based around the espionage and sabotage allegations surrounding Nigel Stepney at Ferrari. McLaren have become implicated, Honda involved as well. Ted Kravitz has the latest. Formula One is a high-stakes sport. With so much money invested and the relentless pressure of competition, stories of espionage have always been part of the game. In Italy, Ferrari have accused their ex-team manager Nigel Stepney of not only tampering with a fuel rig in the factory, but also giving a file of 700 pages of Ferrari secrets to McLaren's chief designer, Mike Coughlin. Stepney denies the allegations, and we've spoken to Coughlin this weekend, but he declined to comment. In another twist to the tale, Honda Racing have admitted that Stepney and Coughlin had visited their factory to discuss joining Honda in senior roles, but that no team secrets were either offered or received. In all the discussions we had uh, with those two gentlemen, nothing was ever said which was inappropriate. There was no confidential, in confidential information. You can't stop people phoning people, etc., etc. But, you know, as I said, there is no intellectual property of any other Grand Prix teams in our cars and they will never be. It takes months of work to improve a car, so Lewis's recent success is unrelated. But the sports governors, the FIA, are investigating any link between McLaren and Ferrari. On the face of it, uh, if one team has 700 pages of documents, all the information about another team, that is not correct from a sporting point of view. When we got all the facts, then we'll decide what to do. And when that happens, I think it's very important for the world outside to see that it's been looked at properly from a sporting point of view and that sporting equity has been maintained.
Well, the FIA have also said that any penalty will affect constructors' points only and not drivers' points, but we'll have to wait and see on that. Uh... Well, this championship battle is still overshadowed for the time being, at least, by the espionage and spying allegations, Ferrari accusing McLaren through the FIA. And it does seem that the championship implications and the sporting implications could well be resolved on Thursday at a special meeting of the World Council that's been convened in Paris. Here's Ted Kravitz. Ron Dennis's demeanour on arrival at the Nürburgring says much about the mood of the whole team. The extent of McLaren's involvement in F1's spy story will be determined next week in Paris when they're called before the FIA's World Council. The meetings to discuss whether McLaren were in unauthorised possession of Ferrari's intellectual property, the famous 700-page file. McLaren's defence is that only one person was in possession, namely chief designer Mike Coughlin. But the FIA argue the team must take collective responsibility for any team member's actions. We are simply concerned with whether the team has or has not done something which is in breach of the sporting code. It's completely separate from the individuals who may have all sorts of liabilities and, and so forth, not our concern. There's been a lot of animosity around the issue and Ferrari are still in a legal battle with their ex-team manager Nigel Stepney. McLaren feel they have a good defence, but if the FIA disagree, they have a range of punishments, including a points deduction for the McLaren drivers, even though it has little to do with them. What happened next week, I think, uh, you know, it's not in, in our control, as you said, and, uh, you know, I really believe that uh, nothing will happen and, uh, you know, uh, everything will be absolutely normal next, next weekend. Because I've been with McLaren for, for nine years now, I know Ron for so long, I, you know, they... The t this is not something he would do, and I know that I'm completely comfortable, comfortable and confident that that's you know there's nothing on our car, and I think it undermines us. You know we work so, we, you know we work so hard to develop the car, and it's you know there's no taking something from someone else's car. You look at our car, and it's 100% McLaren, and it's always been the case. So you know that's my feeling. Whatever the outcome, the effects of the spying row have destabilised Ferrari much less than they have McLaren. The team bosses will argue their case in Paris, but here in Germany, the drivers just have to keep their focus. Is there a danger, do you think, that this great championship we've got this year will be affected by what the World Council decides on Thursday? Well, until we know what's going to happen, we can't say. I mean, if you ask me Thursday, I can tell you then whether I think it'll take what effect it'll have, because we don't know what's going to happen yet. But there, but there is a chance, as, as we spoke to Max last, uh, last week, that they could take points off, off any of the drivers. It would be a shame, wouldn't it? Um, well, I mean, if somebody's done something wrong, they need to receive the punishment that's in line with that. I mean, I mean this, if somebody's running here with a big engine, for example, and they get disqualified, uh, for sure the driver would have also benefited by that as well as the team. So we have to just look and see exactly what has actually happened. But just four days later, Ron Dennis and his McLaren team are here in Paris to answer FIA charges of being in unauthorised possession of Ferrari secrets. McLaren's defence is that they as a team cannot be held responsible for the unwise actions of their chief designer, Mike Coughlin. As it turned out, the World Council rejected that defence, ruling that McLaren had broken the rules. But because the World Council didn't see any evidence that the Ferrari secrets were used to McLaren's benefit, they imposed no penalty. Ferrari were absolutely furious with the judgment and through their National Motorsport Authority have forced the FIA to hold an appeal whereby Ferrari can present any evidence they like. But this weekend, Ron Dennis has written a five-page letter to the Italians in which he stops short of calling Ferrari cheats but does say they won in Melbourne with a flexing floor which gave them an illegal competitive advantage. Ferrari are now livid. They say the McLaren accusations are serious and false and will deal with them in the Court of Appeal. Ferrari lawyers have some busy weeks ahead. We have people working on that, and uh, I think what's fair is fair. We're working to 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 have a, a, the fair situation, even if it's not nice on the sport. But uh, that's the reality. Does it bother you that, according to Ron Dennis, you lost the Australian Grand Prix to an illegal Ferrari? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I I really have no no opinion on that. The drivers are well advised to stay out of this acrimonious sideshow. Sanctions including a big fine, drivers or constructors points deductions, race or championship bans are all possible for McLaren. The FIA appeal will be held at the end of the month. Well, let's get the latest views from Ferrari, shall we? Uh, Luca Colliani, what, what is the feeling of the team around what's been uh, an amazing couple of weeks? Oh, I mean, uh, the team... Uh... 
luckily is focused on uh, their job, which is try and win uh, on the track. There are other people who is uh, following, who are following all the matter. Of course, uh, there were uh, certain decisions that uh, made us no happy, but then uh, not happy. But then uh, later, it was a sensible decision by the president of FIA to to bring all the matter to the court of appeal. So and then we now we have just to wait. Uh, for the tearing of the Court of Appeal. But having said that, the current situation off the track is hardly the finest hour for Ferrari, for McLaren and for Formula One in general. Ted Kravitz can outline now how this whole spying scandal has escalated. The espionage scandal has three sides. Ferrari, led by Jean Tot, who feel hard done by after a load of their secrets ended up in the hands of McLaren's chief designer and are aggrieved that McLaren weren't penalised by the FIA for possessing their secrets. Then there's the FIA, headed by Max Mosley, who couldn't penalise McLaren because they didn't have any hard evidence that the Woking team had used Ferrari secrets to make their own cars go faster. And finally there's McLaren and Ron Dennis, under attack, under suspicion and now under investigation by the courts here in Italy. The FIA will hear new evidence on Thursday that could prove McLaren benefited directly from Ferrari secrets. They've written to all three McLaren drivers demanding that they hand over any emails they have that make reference to Ferrari. In return, they assure the drivers that they will not be punished. There might be nothing in these emails, but if there is, and if it can be proved that the McLaren drivers used the Ferrari data to make their own car go faster, the team is in big trouble. By effectively giving the McLaren drivers immunity, many suspect the FIA will kick McLaren out of the Constructors' Championship if they're found guilty again next week. Despite the best efforts of us reporters, Fernando Alonso has refused to answer any specific questions about his emails. But what a twist it would be if it's emails from McLaren's own drivers that provides the FIA with evidence that could cost the team so dearly. Our uh, legal team is insistent that um, our position is uh, you know, one of staying silent uh, until we get to the World Motorsport Council meeting on Thursday and there we will make a very strong representation uh, addressing uh, uh, the uh, real facts of the matter. This is a very special uh, uh, problem unfortunately but uh, you know I think uh, at the end of the day we are here to to win and to to do our best especially the drivers you know we try to do our best drive the the best way we can and uh, you know try to win for us and for the team. So at the moment at least it's McLaren against Ferrari and the FIA, the governing body of world motorsport. But what could or should be the role and the involvement of the Formula One boss Bernie Eccleston? And what is his view of this whole spying situation? I talked to him this morning. Honestly, I'm not comfortable with any of it, to be quite truthful with you. But in the end, I mean, you, you, you need to do these things. If, let's just say, for an example, somebody was found running a three and a half litre engine, it would obviously be a big advantage. Yes. Should we turn our heads and say, well, you know, that's how it is and not much you can do about it and walk away? Because then the next time somebody said, well, I'm going to run a four litre engine and it would go on. So I suppose really until we've really examined everything to see exactly what happened, difficult to make any decision. There's a feeling that maybe this is a situation where a few old scores are being settled around the paddock and so on. Is no, it? I don't think so. No, I think that's, no, definitely, no, no, no. I mean, if somebody murders somebody and the police are looking at it, it's not a case of old scores being settled, it's, it's fact. No, I think the real thing is, is what information was given and was it used and was it used to an advantage? I think that's basically what we have to look at. What is your understanding of events overnight? Do you know any more? No, I mean, the, the, I can understand the Italian police with the Ferrari, the guy from Ferrari. Stepney, I can understand them investigating that. That was a, apparently theft, apparently. So I can understand them Ferrari being upset and I can understand the police coming in, but I don't know otherwise what's what, I don't know what the charges are. Without being rude about Spiker and Super Aguri, but if it happened between them, you wouldn't be talking to me. It's because it's McLaren and Ferrari. And the big rivalry that exists there. That's, that's the problem. No, I feel so terribly sorry for the drivers, you know, especially Lewis in particular. Yeah. Not because I'm English and you're English and we're talking on ITV, but I think, you know, I feel sorry for him being dragged into it. Yeah. So if there is a message for Lewis from you, uh, is it be confident about your points total remaining intact? Keep your head down and win all the races.
if only that's an ideal message. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, if, it's not something I need to really focus on, to be honest. And as I said, when I came here, I got a call from Ron telling me what's going on. And I was sort of, what are you talking about, Ron? And, uh, and then eventually he filled me in. But um, it, it's not something I have to focus on. I'm leading the World Championship. I've got to focus on my job. And it's, it's for him and for all the other people that are outside trying to figure out exactly what we need to do to, to basically keep ourselves here. But I suppose the concern is for you and everyone who, uh, who has enjoyed what you've achieved so far this year is, is that this will have a damaging effect on, on your points total that you're accumulating for the World Championship title and everything. Absolutely. I think if you really sit down and think about it, I could have what I've worked for uh, and, what the, and what the team has all worked for. We could have it taken away from us. And when you really think about that, it thinks, wow, I could be out of a job next weekend. And then what happens? You know, so it's just going so well. And then all of a sudden you get this big knife that just cuts off your your bloodline i mean it's just it's it's a bit disappointing when you really think about it i won't go into it because otherwise i get emotional but you know i really do have such a great belief in my team i have 100 percent confidence in them and so that's why it's easy for me to just relax but yeah anyway so i'm not gonna say anymore <laughs> I'll drop but the important thing also is, is is that the sport survives this as well and, and you brought so many new fans to the sport who who don't really understand what formula one is about deep down and they certainly don't understand uh, the politics what will be your message to them i never actually thought i'd be sitting here saying i hate something about formula one but the politics and um people want to wanting to be bigger and bigger than others and it's just incredible i'll just say to you all that um ron has always been very very um loyal to me he's always given me the opportunity and and he's just been such a great man to me and and i've i've never had any reasons to ever um not believe him and he i remember when he, he you know he's going through a time right now where i think some people are trying to bring him down and right now the best thing for me is to give him support you know form one would not be the same without mclaren and so let's just keep our fingers crossed that nothing else is going to happen a week is a long time in politics, but it seems like a lifetime in Formula One. Last Sunday, Ron Dennis, the hero, celebrating McLaren's 1-2 at Monza. Four days later in Paris, the guillotine comes down on McLaren's Constructors' Championship. They're judged to have cheated, they're hit with a $100 million fine, and their much-prized integrity is challenged. I've known Ron 40 years. very difficult for me when somebody I've known 40 years looks me in the eye and says, Max, I'm telling the truth with complete sincerity, and uh, you believe him. I just want to be very clear that at no stage did I ever say any lie to anybody. I put my integrity above everything, above this sport, and certainly above Formula One. A line is drawn, a truce is called, but no warm glow returns. It's politics, I'm afraid, first of all. And on Thursday in Paris, the World Motorsports Council excluded McLaren from the Constructors' Championship and also hit them with that $100 million fine. But they didn't touch the points of the two McLaren drivers, Fernando Alonso and Lewis Hamilton. So we're still left with this prospect of Hamilton against Alonso and also Kimi Raikkonen in the battle for the title over the last four races, with Britain's Hamilton leading the championship by three points as he chases the title in his fabulous rookie season. But McLaren had been leading the Constructors' Championship by 23 points after their 1-2 in Monza, but they're out, disqualified and prevented from scoring any further points this season. Ferrari are effectively champions. The rule makers have decided that one, and as Ted Kravitz reports, the FIA and the World Council were really flexing their muscles in Paris on Thursday. What's your feelings today? Are you feeling confident? The truth is, Ron Dennis hasn't felt confident for some time, both about who knew what in his own organisation or what penalty the FIA would impose. McLaren were called before the World Council in the first place to answer charges that they'd used Ferrari's technical secrets to make their own car go faster. The FIA found that they had. It's now become clear what was going on. Ferrari's Nigel Stepney was leaking all sorts of information to his old friend, the McLaren chief designer, Mike Coughlin. Both were disaffected with their jobs. Coughlin would glean information on the Ferrari and then pass it on in emails to McLaren's Pedro de la Rosa, who himself drove for Coughlin when both were at Arrows. It wasn't exactly cloak and dagger stuff. Things like, do you know the red car's weight distribution, Pedro asked. But it's phrases like, it's important for us to know so we can try it in the simulator that suggests McLaren got some competitive advantage out of it. De La Rosa kept Fernando Alonso in the loop as to who was leaking the Ferrari secrets. 
Indeed, when discussing what gas to inflate the tyres with, Alonso himself stressed that McLaren should use what they learned from Ferrari. Quote, it may be the key. Let's hope we can test it during this test. Now, it's this kind of technical chatter that's common between F1 teams and drivers. You can't stop old friends talking. But for Alonso and Della Rosa to put it into writing is breathtaking in its naivety. But perhaps the most explosive thing we've learnt this weekend is that it was Ron Dennis himself who tipped off the FIA as to the existence of Alonso and Della Rosa's emails, an honest confession that's ended up costing him £50 million and a Constructors' Championship. Ron was made aware of the email's existence during an argument with Alonso in Hungary following the infamous pit lane hold-up with Lewis Hamilton. McLaren will continue to support both Alonso and Hamilton's efforts in the Drivers' Championship, but it's clear the relationship between Ron Dennis and Fernando Alonso is now at an all-time low. Well, at the moment, we've got the thoughts of the McLaren boss, Ron Dennis, on everything that's happened to his team this past week. But yesterday afternoon in the paddock, we had some very forthright views indeed from the president of the FIA, Max Mosley. It was only when I got the list from the Italian police, 323, I think, SMS phone calls going over a three-month period between Cotton and Stepney, I realised there has to be more to this. That wasn't, don't get 300 messages arranging a visit to Honda. This is something serious. I think we've demonstrated that we won't tolerate this sort of conduct, and they very nearly were out of business, very nearly. And the other teams fully understand that nobody should do this. And at the same time, the other teams, I think, are actually relieved to know that we will stamp it out. Once you get this culture of cheating in a sport, it's a complete disaster, and you've got to cut it out as soon as you find it. I'm just trying to run a fair, proper sport and make sure there isn't cheating as far as I, I'm able. And it's the World Council of the same. And it really, uh, something like this is very difficult because a team like McLaren can hire the best lawyers you can get your hands on unlimited budget. They come in with literally tons of paper. Now, I'm responsible to the other teams. We're the people who are supposed to make sure that it's all fair and properly run. So uh, the, I think what we did actually was probably less than, arguably less than we should have done, but it's, there was the majority view on the World Council. That $100 million is less than the difference between his budget and that of Frank Williams or Renault and several other teams. So it's a very minor punishment as such. And they were extremely lucky that we didn't quite simply say, you have polluted the championship in 2007. You've probably polluted it in 2008 because we've no way of knowing what information you're using for what in your 2007, 2008 cars. So you better stay out of the championship until 2009 if you're still around because that way we know it's completely fair. We didn't do that and I think when history gets to be written of this, that may be what we will be reproached with. Not with doing too much, but with doing too little. Well, a couple of hours later came a qualification. Some would see it as a retraction of some of Max Mosley's comments, to the extent that he and Ron Dennis were able to declare an uneasy truce, but the last few weeks have certainly taken their toll on Ron Dennis and his team. So what exactly is his relationship now with Max Mosley? Well, you can imagine it's strained because he is the uh, president of the FIA, and uh, the FIA have been, um, you know, very diligent and... Uh, uh, transparent in trying to get to the bottom of uh, what is a, 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 a situation which I just could never believe that McLaren would find itself in. You know, the uh, the way that the thing has unfolded has just been a sort of living, almost living horror story. You know, I can't hide from the fact that, you know, I have had some, uh, primarily one individual and some drivers and, some, you know, other peripheral contacts, you know, that have done things which are just not correct. Nothing is perfect and no one is perfect. So, uh, you know, I, I appreciate that if, uh, if there are being criticisms levied at us, then, you know, then I've got to address those criticisms. But um, we're a great racing team. We know what it is to win. We've got, I don't think anyone's questioning the legality of our cars. Uh, otherwise, I don't think we'd be racing. There's been criticism levelled also at Fernando Alonso in the wake of what might or might not have happened on that Hungarian Grand Prix weekend. What's the relationship actually like now between the two of you? And what's the kind of respect that you have for, for Fernando? I uh, have a, a, a personal commitment which is ingrained in the team uh, to a quality. And um, it doesn't really matter as hard as it's hard as it is to comprehend uh, if a driver in is, is driving one of our cars 
he is going to get a quality in any set of circumstances. And the team knows very well that actually, whatever their emotions about or likes or dislikes about any of our drivers, what comes before is the principle to equality. Yes, my relationship with Fernando is strained. Uh, yes, you know, he was, as I was, very much involved in, in uh, going to the FIA. You know, I, I made the call. I encouraged in, in all of our drivers and uh, the people involved in this. You know, I, I encouraged transparency and disclosure. You can't hide from the truth. I think the important thing is when the truth comes out, it's just to take a, a balanced view on it. I want closure because I think this is the right thing for Formula One. Formula One's important to me. And uh, if I've damaged it, I most certainly have a very, uh, a very honest responsibility to try and contribute to repairing it. And I think probably closure is the right way to go. I, if I can address the, let's say, the loose ends of this affair and make quite sure that closure is closure, then my recommendation to my shareholders and my key partners is to uh, uh, not to appeal and move on. And of course, Ferrari now virtually guaranteed the Constructors' Championship title after the exclusion of McLaren in Paris on Thursday. And the other big decision, the other big penalty uh, that McLaren got hit with on Thursday was that $100 million fine. Now, how does any organisation, let alone a sports team, absorb a financial hit like that? Well, here's a closer look at the finances of McLaren. Being handed the largest fine in motorsport history is a dubious honour, but it's something Ron Dennis will have to sort out. $100 million, £50 million would fund a year's racing for a small team like Spiker, but the sharp end of the grid attracts and retains big money, so the truth is, the top teams do have access to this kind of cash. £50 million was the headline figure, but the final total is minus the prize money McLaren would have received from Bernie Eccleston, which is about £35 million. So the balance to be paid by McLaren to the FIA will be in the region of £15 million. Well, these are McLaren's inputs. They get over £75 million in sponsorship, half of which comes from their title sponsor. Mercedes-Benz put in a further £125 million. That's the value of their supply of free engines for a year. Plus technical partners such as tyres, fuel, brakes, hardware and software contribute another £8 million. All in all, McLaren have an annual budget of around £220 million. But as we all know, Formula One is super expensive. A world champion driver will cost you £12 million a year and then there's the 600 race employees to fund. This is their bottom line. McLaren's last published annual profits were just £4.9 million and it's estimated that they only have £2.5 million in the bank. So how will they pay the £15 million fine? Ron Dennis insists it will not be funded from the race team budget but from other revenue streams. Indeed, the race team budgets for next year have already been set. So while for McLaren, exclusion from the Constructors' Championship has broken their heart, at least it won't break the bank.